Hey folks, it's a man once again. Uh, I'm not sure when this will be posted up. Um, real quick note for people out there. Um, I know a lot of people have been putting in requests for me to review certain movies. Um, on the one hand, I'm not really doing requests unless you know I'm reviewing some of the films that people have actually sent me. I'm not saying you have to do that to do requests. I'm just saying um, those are really the only requests I'm doing now. I'm pretty much just want to be random with doing videos it's kind of more fun that way but I really am going to try to get to some of your guys requests I'm going to try I don't know when I know I keep saying sometime down the road but I, I swear it will be sometime down the road just bear with me so I apologize for that because I just want to thank you guys for being nice enough to actually give me hey you know here's a request can you review this and you actually want to hear my thoughts on stuff it's just always crazy to me but uh, I do apologize for that, but um, I'm just doing random stuff right now. But thank you once again for that. I'm going to try sometime down the road. I don't know when, but um, speaking of random, uh, brings us to this film today called Point Blank. And that's not Point Break, not the film with Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. It's Point Blank. So, a film from 1998, starring Mickey Rourke, actually. You have Mickey Rourke, you have Danny Trejo, you have this guy, Kevin Gage, who's been in a couple stuff. He was in the movie Heat with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. He was one of the instructors in G.I. Jane, among other films. You have Michael Wright. He's the guy in Money Talks that Chris Tucker and Charlie Sheen go to, and he's the guy with the guns, and they want help from him. And at the end of the movie, in that stadium, he's the guy who who has the lollipop and fires the rocket launcher and such. That's Michael Wright. I think he also starred in, I believe, a film called The Five Heartbeats or something like that, I believe. That's Michael Wright. You have Paul Ben Victor, who I remember from this TV show, The Invisible Man. I think he was on that. But he's the guy in Daredevil who Daredevil fights... And the guy falls and kind of cracks his back on the subway train and gets run over. Uh, now, this was directed by uh, first-time director Matt Earl Beasley. I think this is the only actual film that he's directed. Mainly after this, he just went and did TV shows. But the way he got started was uh, second unit stuff. He was a second unit director. If I look through his credits, he was a second assistant director in Big Trouble Low China and Teen Kong Lives. He was first assistant director in Fright Night Part 2 and Leviathan and Warlock and The Rookie. He was oh also Wayne's World 2. He was second unit director in Braveheart and Black Sheep. First assistant director and second unit director in Chain Reaction. Uh, first assistant director on 13 Ghosts, Hard Rain, so he's done a lot of films. This is the really the only f actual film that he's directed. Again, the guy after this just did TV shows, CSI Miami, Hawaii Five O, CSI New York, uh, just plain old CSI Lost. Oh, an episode of the Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles, one called Queen's Gambit. He directed that episode. Um, the film itself, it gets a 3.99 to be, and I can see why. The, how I saw this is actually on for free on YouTube by Lions Day. Seems like Lions Day has a bunch of films that I didn't even realize they owned, but I guess they do, and they have so you can watch for free. And this is one of them, point blank. And I was interested because it was a diehard ripoff movie. And a lot of times I like those films. Not every time, but a lot of times I like those. Even lower budget films like Daily Outbreak with Jeff Speedman. I think that's an awesome movie. Uh, among others. And Mickey Ward plays this guy. He was a Texas lawman. I, I can't remember if he was a sheriff or something like that. A ranger. I can't remember exactly. But he quit to work with his father on the farm. And it's mainly due to his brother, played by Kevin Gage, being arrested put in jail. 
But his brother, along with Danny Trejo, Michael Wright, Paul Ben Victor, they all break out of jail out of this prison bus where you have a lot of men and sort of pretty much steam ass, pretty much gunning down the guards, the cops, and so on and so forth. And they break them out and they bring them back to a shopping mall because Paul Ben Victor's, I guess, his business, like his, his drugs and stuff, are hidden in a little office that he has in the shopping mall. So they go there and they take people hostage. They call Mickey Ward, he goes in and he takes people out one by one. And I'm like, okay, that sounds nice. Sounds like a win-win situation. I'm going to try to remember to put the link to the trailer as well as the movie itself down below. Now, my thoughts on the film, it's not the worst, it's not the best. It's definitely not the worst Die Hard ripoff I've ever seen. It's definitely, definitely not the best. I can't even call it a good movie. It's a harmless time waster. Like, I didn't get mad watching it. Like, I watched the film, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm trying, you know, you're you're doing something on the computer and you, you know, you watch it. Oh, okay, cool. You know, you do something. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's a harmless time waster. If I found it for like one or two bucks or granted, of course, if someone gave it to me, then yeah. But if I found it in the store somewhere for one, two bucks, maybe three bucks, um, I'm sure you can get that online, but with shipping and stuff, it'd still be like six, seven bucks. And I wouldn't pay six, seven bucks for this film. Because, you know, you have shipping and stuff. So if I saw it for like two, three bucks max, then yeah, I would get it. But on one hand, it's kind of pretty straightforward plot. There's nothing much to it. But in a way, it's, it's not really a problem, but I don't know how to describe it. I just the good and the bad. The good parts, uh, the cast do what they have to do. Mickey Wark... He's pretty much a man of few words. He doesn't have much to say in this film, which is a shame because Mickey Ward is a good actor. And you could probably tell, I, I I could guess his heart probably wasn't into this film. Like, this is probably like a paycheck movie. Like, you know, this is probably when he was trying to do his boxing. And, you know, there's many years before he would start his comeback with Sin City and the wrestlers, stuff like that. But he's very roided up. He's very got big fucking muscles. Very roided up guy. You know, like almost moves like that too. He really does kind of almost moves like, hey, where's the gym? You know. <laughs> um, and I know I've caught two times I caught that his voice was not his voice. Meaning, there's two times where you I listen, like for instance, he cuts a guy's throat. And then I hear a voice saying, in 30 seconds you'll be unconscious, and three minutes you'll be dead, or something to that effect. I know it's not Mickey Ward's voice. And I caught it another time before that. It's almost, it's not as often as like Seagull does it, but um, there's two times it's like they had to put in words later. And I'm, sh I'm guessing Mickey Ward's like, fuck it, I'm not coming in. <clears throat> so they found another actor to put it in. That was kind of distracting. Uh... But Mickey Ward, I mean, it doesn't seem like he's much of a fighter. Maybe he is, but the way they edit it, it doesn't seem that way, and I'll get to. But, you know, Mickey Ward, he has a good presence. Even in a bad role, he has a good presence to him. So, you know, it's Mickey Ward, you know. Even if it's in stuff like this, he has a good presence to him. I think he could make a good hero in a diehard type of movie, but... This really isn't the, the best case for that. I mean, again, this is one of those times where you know how people make fun of, say, Cobra, Jeff Speakman films like Daily Outbreak, Gary Daniels stuff like Riot. Uh, those are films I would defend. Like, hey, those are, I think they're really good films. I think they're solid. I think they're entertaining. When they talk about bad, cheesy, B-movie action films... This is what I think of. This is what I think of when I think of that. Like, Cobra I wholeheartedly enjoy. Daily Outbreak, Street Night. Um, I know it's more. Olivier Gruner's Automatic, Nemesis. I wholeheartedly enjoy them. I'm not saying that they're perfect. But I'm just saying I wholeheartedly enjoy them. Here, though, I can understand people calling it's really cheesy, bad, B-action movie. 
And they would be right. I mean, I, yeah, it, the 3.9 made sense. But yeah, Mindy Ward does what he can. Same with, with uh, Kevin Gage, uh, Michael Wright, Danny Trail plays a crazy guy who snores coke and um, shoots innocent hostages. Very blase about it. Very crazed performance. And they all do their jobs well. I mean, they, with the script they have, which for some reason this has like four or five screenwriters. I have no idea why there's four or five screenwriters. Go figure. And I looked them up. They didn't really want to do a whole lot of stuff, to be honest. Um, but the actors do what they can. Um, the action scenes are all right at best. Like, the, the bloody pra uh, squibs, bloody practical bullet squibs, which is weird that, you know, a low-budget film like this can do it, but yet you have certain films, like big-budget films that for some reason cannot do that, and I don't understand why. Probably the most well-known writers are like Terry Solomon, and there's another guy who wrote TNT, I think that's an Olivia Gruner film, and Earth vs. the Spider, which was a TV movie. Earth vs. the Spider, that's another film that had like four or five or so writers, so don't really understand why. But you definitely get a lot of bloody bullet squibs. You get some decent action. It goes at a fairly decent pace. Uh, I think the best way to put it really, I know I've gone 11 minutes already, is the bad stuff. Why? Number one, the director has a tendency to shoot a lot of scenes like this. Like, there's a lot of scenes that are like this. Not all of them. It's not like 80% of the time, I'm not saying it, but there's a lot of times where the camera's just like this. Or it's just like this. And you're like, why is he doing this? Like, why is the camera like this? Then another shot, the camera's like this. You know, then it's normal, no one, then all of a sudden just like this. Like you have an action scene that's shot kind of sideways or something. I don't really understand that. Um, it was kind of distracting. I do understand, like, Scott Speedle, he's really, tr like, Scott Speedle can do that kind of stuff right. If you know who Scott Speedle is, you know, check out Intruder from Dustin On 2. Like, his, okay, that's inventive. Here is just, I don't know, kind of distracting. Um, that's. The editing is a problem. When I was mentioning uh, Mickey Ward's fight scenes, like there's a like the first guy he gets is a guy on a rooftop, and like you see Mickey Ward's feet, then you see like kind of a jump, but it's kind of like again, kind of kind of in this sideways angle. We kind of see Mickey Ward just grab the guy with his legs, you know, as if he hooked his legs onto the guy's body and slammed him down. But it's kind of edited in a funky way. It's almost like really masking the fact that maybe Mitch Ward didn't know how to do the moves. Either didn't know or didn't care. Um, there's another thing where like you see Mitch Ward, then you see like a close up of a foot, and then you have a wide shot with the guy kicking, and then close up of Mitch Ward. Like, did you really tell us not Mitch Ward doing it? These you know fight scenes. Or, like, there's a moment where. Um, the bad guy should shoot, and Mickey Ward's character does bat flips. Literally does like, like, you know, fucking ballet. I, I, I want to say ballet, but well, ballet it, you know, bat flips to dodge the bullets. Like, choo, 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 you know. <laughs> and of course, you're not going to buy that Mickey Ward's doing that. Like, think, okay, look at it this way. If you saw Stallone. In a movie, just doing fucking bat flips, you know, blah, blah. You'd be like, what the hell? You know. Like Van Damme and Hard Target, you can buy. Because Van Damme is a martial artist, you can buy, he's flexible. You know, doing the splits and all. But again, it'd be like if Arnold Schwarzenegger, since, again, Mickey Ward's pretty steroided up in this. If he was, if Schwarzenegger was just doing bat flips, it'd be like, what the hell? Uh. There's a little bit too much time with the criminals, meaning um, they're really trying to make us give a crap about these guys. And the actors are not the problem. The script, though, with all these scripts, it's like, I'm not going to care about these guys. 
Oh jeez, these guys broke out of the prison bros and killed a bunch of guards. Innocent cops. I'm not gonna care about these guys. So then when you put time into like Michael Wright, again the guy from um the five heartbeats and uh, money talks. He's talking about how he's in jail because his CEO was fucking his woman and he stabbed the guy like 13 or something times. And this dialogue about seeing his CEO's ass going up and down and a tattoo on his ass. You're like, what kind of dialogue is that? But like, I'm, I don't care about a guy who stabbed the guy, you know, 13 times, like turned his heart to hamburger. And like, you guys are, you know, killing innocent civilians. Or you, you're not stopping them that much. You're not doing that much effort. Like Danny Trejo, he's killing people left and right because he's the crazy guy. Or like Kevin Gage. Like this is after they killed the, you know, the, he, great, we don't see him kill, but he's helped plan the escape. And a bunch of cops had gotten killed. And Danny Trejo is like killing some civilians. Like he makes a guy run and shoots him in the back. And then it cuts to Kevin Gage like saying, don't hurt anybody, all right? Don't let anybody, you know. I'm like, what are you talking about? The guy, they just killed like five people, including guards and and civilians. And I think Danny Trejo killed a, a woman or something as well. And now you're saying, oh, don't kill, you know, don't hurt anyone or something, you know. I'm like, what are you talking about? Same with Paul Ben Victor, who's like kind of head here and trying to do, kind of do a Hans Gruber type of thing, but he doesn't really pull it off. I'm, I'm sad to say my opinion like trying to ransom with the cops but kind of giving them bullshit he's like oh you know we killed two people so I'm like you killed more than two people what are you talking about dude it's like I'm not going to care about these guys I don't care that Kevin Gage is Mickey Ward's brother and Mickey Ward's mainly going in there to get his brother out I'm like I'm sorry I don't care about him you're killing innocent people they're getting killed it's like it's like if you want to try to have Hans Gruber or Jeremy Irons or Dennis Hopper or you know anybody in Sudden Death or any of these other films to sit down and like have a conscience and it's like it doesn't pull off well it really doesn't and you kinda want those scenes to be over and then the action scenes they get hampered down by editing or like you know stupid stuff like him bat flipping, Mickey Ward bat flipping well his character I mean, he did some stuff like after he killed that guy on the rooftop, he goes downstairs, and this is where the, the the editing really sucks too. Like a guy puts a gun to the back of his head, right? Then it cuts to another guy finding the guy he killed on the roof. <clears throat> then it cuts back, Victor Ward's like squatting, and the guy who had the gun is like way over there checking on a bag. <clears throat> I'm like, why? Like, how come he didn't just shoot Mickey Ward? How come he doesn't have him in handcuffs? How come he, or any kind of tied up? How come he's all the fucking way over there? So then what happens is that on top, another shitty editing, the one guy pulls the, the dead guy and there's a grenade. Now, there's an explosion. The weird thing about this explosion, there's no smoke, there's no fire, there's no debris. Literally, you barely hear an explosion, and then, well, maybe you hear it. I don't even remember that part. But I do remember that you just see the guy just flying back, hitting something, and sliding down. No smoke, no fire, no debris. I'm like, D was there an explosion? Like, it's just, boom. And then you see the guy fly back, and, like, no, you know, you can't even afford that. Like, you blow up cars in a movie, but you can't even afford that. Seriously? It's just really crappy editing same with here like why well, how come it's at Mickey Ward's head then it cuts then it cuts back and the guy's over there chicken on the bank why is he doing it so of course Mickey Ward after the diversion with the grenade on the roof he pulls his knife thing okay kinda like what Thomas Jane would later do in the Punisher has that knife that acts like a gun okay cool I know someone would say well why didn't he just have another gun there but okay cool it's something different okay um, he kills a guy by strangling him. He puts like a bag over the guy's head and suffocates him, breaks his neck or something. Uh, you have a couple shootouts. I mean, shootouts that are decent, but nothing to run home about. Um, it's funny, there's one where uh, he's trying to shoot a Danny Trail, so he's running, he does like a. F 
he's running this and he mid dwarf sort of jumps and then goes like this and shoots misses Danny Trejo but then still hits another guy right between the eyes um, but yeah the the fight scenes are pretty badly choreographed like mid dwarf's fight scene with Danny Trejo is really I think a really shitty fight if I blatantly honest a shitty fight belly edited just really boring fight, um, clumsy fight. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, and moments where you're supposed to care, like we're supposed to care about this younger kid who's part of it. He's like, "Well, you know, I'm in jail because I, I wanted some food and I stole some food and cops were chasing me and I turned and I hit a cop car and I killed two cops." You think I deserve this death sentence? And this woman there is like, no, you don't. And I'm like, sorry, dude. I'm you do. I hate to break the party to you. You stole food. No, you don't deserve the death penalty for that. But you, for running and you accidentally killed two cops, but you killed two cops. I hate to break it to you. You did it. You want food that badly? Fucking do something else. Get a job. Help. Fucking use a lawnmower and mow people's lawns. You'll get money for food. Do some chores for people. Rake some fucking leaves. Go to a homeless shelter. You know, be a bum. Suck a dick for five bucks a piece. You'll get your money. You can go to McDonald's do the dollar menu. You don't have to do the shit. You know, come on now. You know. Or you should just say, you know what? Okay, arrest me. Then, you, hell, you'll be in jail, but you'll get food in jail. Be better than killing two times. I mean, he didn't mean to do it, but at the same time, it was like, you know, I don't know. Like, maybe if it was a better actor, but I didn't care for the actor, and I didn't care for the character. I mean, so once in a while, they do that kind of thing, and, you know, because it's a good actor, they pull it off, but this wasn't really the case. Danny Trejo, I mean, he has fun with his role. Like, there's this other, this woman who's a hostage and she wants some coke and he gives her some coke and then takes her out bad and she I don't know if they're in a bathroom or something like she's done just because this little coke she does like a strip tease and she's like on a dance pole or something in front of Danny Trail. and then this is what I mean like we're supposed to care about Kevin Dage and Michael Wright their plight they go in and they say you know stop this shit so Danny Trail takes the girl and they don't stop him at all Danny Trail takes the girl out, she's scared for her life, shows it to the people out there, you know, shoots her in the head, cold blood. Kevin Gage and Mike Dur they don't do anything about it. So don't give me the shit when I'm supposed to care about these guys. No. The only one I'm gonna try to care about is Mickey Wark. And it doesn't really seem like he wants to be in the movie at times. <clears throat> but who knows? You know, he doesn't have many words to say, so. I'm trying to think of stuff that I'm missing from this movie. Uh, wonky, crappy editing at times. Uh, you have a couple decent action scenes like gunfights and such. And bloody practical bullet squids. But then you have some very mediocre fight scenes with wonky editing. You know, the mask the fact that for some reason they can't do an explosion with a grenade. But yet they can blow up cars. And, you know... Mickey Ward is a boxer, so you would think he could fight, but they edited it to make him us think that he's some martial artist guy, and he's really not. I don't, I don't really understand why they did that. Why didn't he just play on his boxing? You know, like Stallone, he didn't actually do some stuff, like Tango and Cash, like he pulled it off, but, you know, stick to the boxing. I don't understand why you couldn't just do that. I don't really get it. If he's a boxer, just stick with the jab and, you know. <clears throat> But for some reason they didn't. Um, I swear, I swear, Danny Trails care like the way these people did knocked off. You know, Mitchell Ward, like there's a time where he he lights something on the floor on fire, and I still don't get. I might not have been paying attention, so that may be my fault. He lights something on the floor. I don't know what it is. And it goes off, and it, like lights this little stand on fire, and they're watching, going, "Oh, what's this? This is weird." And then. Mickey Ward, I swear he has a gun, and instead of like shooting the guys, he 
I guess maybe maybe they got protective gear on. Maybe that's why. So I'll let that go. Whatever. I still don't know how the hell that thing caught on fire though. He shoots the thing that blow that blows like this uh, <clears throat> flammable liquid onto the person, and they get engulfed in flames. <clears throat> Michael Wright. <clears throat> and for those wondering, this is the the cover of the film. And Michael Wright's here. Yeah, he's the black guy. Kevin Gage, Danny Trail, and then Mickey Ward. Michael Wright, it, he doesn't want to go back to jail, so he goes to a rooftop, and he there's like a mini gun station there, and he tries to shoot whoever he can, but he gets shot and killed. Uh, Paul Ben Victor shoots Kevin Gage, because they kind of have a little bit of a falling out. Uh, Paul Ben Victor gets his throat cut, and that's where you hear one of the lines that Mickey Ward did not say. I don't know why they did that. You don't really see much of the throat slit, you just get the idea for it and the sound effects. And I will admit, you know, the scene where Mickey Ward and Kevin Gage, like Mickey Ward's holding his brother who's dying, and the piece of music is playing there, it's well done. I like the piece of music. Like the rest of the music is, is guitar riffs, and usually I like guitar riffs, but I wasn't really a fan of this soundtrack. But the piece of music, like the softer, more heartfelt piece of music, like the scene where Mickey Ward's holding his brother's dying, I like that piece of music. And I didn't mind the scene because I didn't. Mickey Ward's a good actor. He really is. It, he can make it work. And Kevin Gage, he wasn't a bad actor. I think it just the script didn't really work well. I know you're saying, come on, a script and a diehard ripoff. But even this, it's like, don't try to make us care for these bad guys. I mean, they could do... Even Under Siege, Under Siege 2, all those movies, they knew not to do that. They could be fun, but don't make us say, oh, we feel sorry for them and shit. Don't do that. It's really silly and stupid. Uh, just to make you work in there, taking these dials out one by one. And... But then the, the action scenes are really not that spectacular at all. And I can't excuse that because I've seen PM Entertainment films. I've seen films like Riot with Gary Daniels, Daily Outburst with Jeff Speakman, among many others. They're low budget and they have more spectacular, memorable action scenes in this film. They're not the worst I've ever seen, but it's not like, oh my god, uh, this is fantastic, or wow, for a directed DVD film, this is excellent. I've seen that. Drive with Mark DeCostros. Hell, even The Raid. That cost, what, a million bucks? Give or take? The Raid, aka Raid Redemption. So, you know. <clears throat> uh. Oh, and then uh, Danny Trail. I swear, Danny Trail's character. I swear he gets shot twice in the head, and still doesn't die. And then you have the younger kid trying and uh, to save these hostages from Danny Trail, and then after, this is after Mickey Ward's his brother's dead. Mickey Ward walks up, and Danny Trail tries to shoot him, and the guns are empty. And it's really not much. Mickey Ward gets like, this knife and just stabs him, Danny Trail in the stomach. Pretty much it. Nothing much to it. You know, if it was like beating the shit out of him, throwing up somewhere and, you know, throwing a match or throwing something, boom. No, it's just a simple stab. Or even like a stab, you know, underneath the chin or in the head, in the eye. But no, it's just a simple stab in the stomach. Nothing much to run home about. Kind of that lackluster. And he lets that kid go... And, you know, he's got help God the hostages out, and pretty much the movie's over. Now, I know the review's like half an hour. I know it's a long review. But at the end of the day, it's a harmless time waster at best. I mean, again, I would, two, three bucks, yeah, I'd get it because, you know, I like Mickey Ward, even in stuff like this. You know, I, I do like Mickey Ward. I haven't seen all of his films, but I do like Mickey Ward. Uh, and Mickey Ward in an action film could work if he had a, I don't know, maybe it was the director or the script or both, I don't know. Could have been. Um, I think if they, they just played the Mickey Ward strength, like the guy is an actor, he did go out as a boxer, just use that strength. You could, you know, get some better choreographed fight sequences. I mean, you had the bloody practical squibs, you got some decent gunplay, but you can have some good fist fights. You know, get a better choreographer. Don't put a lot of scenes in this fucking shit. Handle the editing better so that 
you know, one minute a guy, a gun is at Mickey Ward's head, then the next minute he's over there looking at a bag, and we're like, why the fuck is he doing that? Um, don't have his character fucking bat flip, because we're not going to buy it. Don't spend, you know, an amount of time with the criminals and why they were put in jail, expecting us to feel sorry for them and be this heartfelt drama. It's not going to work. The heartfelt drama, you know, maybe the scene with Mickey Ward is holding his brother's dying because of the piece of music. Mickey Ward's a good actor. But the rest of it didn't work for me. And I'm, there's no way I should care about them because those characters... Either they killed innocent people, they let innocent people get killed, they didn't do anything about it, they just wanted their own asses saved. You know. And again, the fight scenes are pretty mediocre, bad choreography, some decent gunplay. The overall point blank is just again for two, three bucks, yeah, I'd get it. For the collection. For my action movie collection, but it deserves a 3.9. It didn't piss me off. Again, it's sort of a harmless time waster, but it's a bad movie. At the end of the day as well, it's a bad movie. I can't say it's a good movie. Like, if someone said, oh, this is a piece of shit, I'm like, you know what, you're right. <laughs> you know, I love Cobra. I love Daily Outbreak. I love Riot. And I saw Rage with uh, Gary Daniels. That's a really good one. Automatic Nemesis. Even, uh... One that Olivia Gruner that was sent to me, um, like Mercenary was pr was good, better than this. Uh, what was the other one? Savat, that was much better than this. I mean, I've seen much better than this. Angel Town, there's there's tons more low budget action films. Even the, like stuff like The Perfect Weapon, you know. Even stuff today like Command Performance with Dolph Lundgren. Command Performance Dolph Lundgren is much better than this film. Because Dolph Lundgren knows how to handle, you know, he's he directed the shit. He knows how to handle it. But maybe because he had a first-time director, you had four or five guys in the script. You, you didn't need that people in the script. But anyway, I'm just rambling on and on. But either way, that's my review of Point Blank. Um, an action crime drama. And uh, the drama doesn't work. The action... A lot of it's pretty mediocre. Yeah, a couple of decent ones at best. And again, Mickey Ward could work in this role. Even steroid up. Like a motherfucker. But, you know, this this wasn't it. This was not it. You want to see Mickey Ward be a badass? Watch Sin City. You know. Even though he doesn't do any action, his little scene, The Expendables, was more memorable than this. I mean, but yeah, that's point blank. And you can check it out for free down below. Um... And maybe you'll disagree. Maybe you'll like it better than me. I mean, I didn't hate the film. I can't say I hate the film. I've seen so much worse. But I've seen so much better, too. I think that's the case. And there's really no excuse. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you later. Ciao.